Hey there guys, it's Paul Badrick here, the uh, founder of Click Through Strategic Digital Marketing Consultants. I hope you're well today. Just want to do a quick video for you uh, to talk about what really are the two keys to business growth. And it's really all about understanding this. And it's not that you simply have one business, you have two businesses. And what I mean by that is that your business now is really all about cash flow, nothing else. Uh, you really need to focus on getting your money in and making as much uh, income as you possibly can. And then obviously trying to get that to be re regenerated over and over again, trying to get people buying over and over again from you, becoming lifetime customers or lifetime clients as opposed to you know one off a single purchase. So it's really all about focusing on things like generating leads, uh, both online, off and offline. You know, it doesn't matter whether you focus online or whether you focus offline. Personally, I suggest you use both because the principles that generally are used to generate leads and to convert people from leads to customer clients are actually exactly the same no matter whether you're working online or offline so don't be afraid to use things that perhaps have used worked for work, worked well for you in your offline business to why not try them on online you know doing things like these videos is simply a, it's like having a conversation or it's like delivering a presentation the only difference is you're doing it on video and you can then post that video on all your different channels and all your websites and so on and so forth to generate leads for you. So I highly recommend that you do that and vice versa. If you're doing things that are working offline well, then why not consider trying to branch out and do them, start doing them on, on off, offline? Um, because, you know, again, if you're doing video sales letters or you're doing um, online uh, sales letters, things like that, online videos, there's no reason why you can't convert what your knowledge is and what you're trying to say to your prospects into you know, a, a sales letter which you send out to people or a postcard that you send out to people or you know, a brochure or however it is that suits your business and what you really find effective. <clears throat> but certainly give these things a try. And of course, always be testing and measuring when you're trying anything uh, in terms of marketing because you, you, know, you, might, you might get it right first time, but the chances are that if you keep trying and you keep adding uh, different things and trying different things, I guarantee you that you'll find better results in the long, time, long term by doing this. So, you know, also think about things like referrals. You know, where can I get more referrals from? Um, you know, how can I get people to refer my business? Well, of course, clients and happy clients are your best firms, best forms of referrals. You know, going to uh, the B and I meetings and things like this certainly can work very well for you if that's your if that's your band getting up so early in the morning and uh, going to breakfast with strangers. Then uh, you know, feel free to carry it on. But in terms of actually making the most of your productivity and your time. I don't believe that's a great way of getting referrals. I think you need a referral system in place which takes advantage of happy clients and indeed the people that work with you as well as for you. You know, think about uh, outside the box ways of generating referrals. Think about using people that work with you, work for you. Think about um, certainly ways to incentivize your clients to refer you. You know, if you've got um, clients that are buying things from you regularly, then these are the sorts of people that you really should be making sure that they know that you they want to be promoting you. And if they do so, they're going to get great value out of themselves, whether that's in the form of discounts on things that they buy from you or whether it's in the form of reciprocal uh, referral system. But um, set up a referral system, and I'll be doing a video about referral systems later on uh, in, uh, in, this, in this series, but um, for the meantime, just start thinking about yourselves of, you know, as opposed to uh, trying to get referrals from strangers and people that you don't know and perhaps they couldn't really understand what it is you do because they've never been clients of yours. I would uh, focus more on uh, you using your clients and, and helping your clients more to understand how they can refer people, new people into your service. Of course, you know that costs you very little, if anything at all. Joint ventures, of course, are another great thing to do in terms of generating leads and increasing your business. Uh, you know, always be looking for new people that you can work with, people that perhaps have got access to your marketplace, the people that you want to attract and you know that you're going to be able to help and work together with these people to design you know, new uh, products and services that you can jointly put out there or, you know, uh, send out uh, emails to each other's list. Uh, but obviously always coming from the point of view of adding value to the new people and the new prospects and um, you know, joint ventures 
partnerships can be a very, very powerful way of generating, you know, again, almost free new leads and, and a good supply and a good stream of free new leads without necessarily having to spend a penny other than perhaps taking somebody for a cup of coffee or lunch and, um, you know, telling them, uh, selling them the benefits of what it is you do and how that can help their clients. So uh, making sales, of course, is, is, is the next step. After you generate leads, you need to convert leads into sales, which is the most critical part of it, in fact. You know, and uh, don't be afraid of this. There's nothing to be afraid of, because if you're coming from a value proposition, a value point of view, where you're trying to help people and you're trying to solve problems, then sales is really very straightforward indeed, because it becomes a very very simple process and almost a you know a smooth line if you're your only reason you should come up against any barriers and if you if you find you do or any bumps or any uh, abrasions where you're rubbing up against people the wrong way then you'll probably find that you're actually not adding enough value you're not or you're not putting over the value um, to the client in the right way you know and obviously be very collaborative in the way that you, you talk to people and actually show them how they, how things are going to work for them and, then, and if you possibly can show them these things in advance without them actually having to spend any money with you because if they can see in advance from something that you've done or some simply sitting down with them how valuable it's going to be to them and dem you can demonstrate that then of course it's going to be much more likely that the people are going to want to join you because they've seen these results in advance already so uh, the next step uh, or the next thing to focus on is maximizing any monies that you're making and then we, we start talking about things like your ACVs your average customer value um, clients that are in buying mode you know, make sure that you're taking advantage of them by upselling and cross-selling you know if you're a consultant or you're a coach or, or you're in a service profession then it's not so much as a it's not a um, sort of inspirational or a um, purchase that is off the cuff but you can still take advantage by adding little things like order bumps when people are ordering on, on your on your sales pages and things like this and they can make a dramatic difference in fact a good order bump can actually increase the value of one transaction by as much as 33% and that can make an awful lot of difference in your business uh, but again it's coming from value but take advantage of these things because people want to buy from you if you're demonstrating value if you're solving the problems that they have people will want to buy from you so don't be afraid to give them, give them new things that they can buy for you and make them great offers and you know as I said try and get as many offers in front of people as you possibly can uh, and really you need to try and systemize the process as soon as you possibly can and create long-term clients and when you do this then business becomes much easier because what you've got is almost a machine or a, or a revenue driving machine that starts off with generating your leads then helps you with the, the job of converting leads into clients and upselling and cross-selling and things like that um, and uh, by doing this you're going to really much increase the amount of money that you make from each client and the lifetime value of your client and when you know these sorts of numbers then marketing online and indeed paying for traffic becomes very easy because you're one of the few people in your area in your niche actually understands what you can afford to pay to generate a new client and when you know that you can actually outbid most of your uh, most of your competitors who are probably only interested in paying as little as they possibly can for a new lead or a new client but if you know that you for instance you can um, your your average customer value is 60 pounds then you know that you can afford to pay 59 pounds and you're still going to make a profit that sounds very simplistic and of course you know you've got tax and everything else but realistically that is the way to consider it don't think about what's the cheapest amount of money how's the what's the free ways all the time because sometimes actually the professional way is not necessarily that way at all so the second part of your business the actual other part of your business is your next what I call your next business and this is all about the future growth of your company and your business and the long-term success this determines whether you're going to be one of those small businesses consultancies people that's only going to have a short-term business is only going to be around for you know a few years or well, this determines the difference between the, the companies that get to a certain level and then stall and fail or they go on to become huge multi multi-million pound uh, companies and consultants and there's no reason this can't happen to you you know it might sound like amazing to you at the moment because you might not be in that position or you might actually be in a position 
where you're thinking, well, that's not enough for me. I want to be going even further. Well, again, this is still part of the process. You need to understand what your business needs to become and what it needs to look like in the future and the people that you need to be, you need to have involved with you for that to actually happen. So to do this, you need to focus on things like product and service creation, new adding new products and service. As I said earlier, people want to buy from you if you're solving problems. So solve the problems that people have. 